Hi there, right, so we're going to get started by downloading the publisher template file and you can find that on the Performance Ticket Printer website which as you can see here is ticketprinters.co.uk If you then click on the full colour tickets link on the left and then at the bottom you'll see we can also print your own ticket and poster designs and there's a click here link for the templates so if you click on that link you can see we've got some information here about our ticket sizes and what formats of files we can take a little bit of advice there on producing your own files um, and the link we're looking for here is the Microsoft Publisher ticket template which you can download by clicking on this link here OK, so we've downloaded our template file and we've saved it to our local hard drive. I've just opened it up in Microsoft Publisher here. Now I'm using Publisher 2010, which might look a little bit different from your version, but all the same buttons are here in both versions of Publisher. So this is the template file we give you. And as you can see, the page size is all set up. We've got the large stub here on the right, which is going to be where the, uh, the main information goes. This is going to be the portion of the ticket that the customer will want to keep. And then we've got three stubs on the left here. Um, typically this first stub will be the one that's kept by the box office. The second stub is the one that's given up when the customer uh, enters the show. And then the third stub is your spare stub to do whatever you like with. Uh, now we're going to just set a very simple ticket here. And by default we've actually got uh, four text box text boxes already set up. So if I click there you can see that's the stub text box for stub one. And uh, we can move these around if you wish. We've just set those up there for you so that you can see where the portions of the ticket are. And uh, you can, if you wish, just type in that section and say, so in this case, let's just say stub one, test, 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 test. And you can see it will wrap round um, within that stub. So we can work within these individual stubs one by one if we wish and set our ticket that way. So let's just start off by setting a uh, uh, a ticket for um, a bar called Brass Text Bar. And we're going to do a show on the 15th of January 2012 um, with doors opening at 7 p.m. And it's going to be by a band called Shatner's Bassoon plus special guests. And then we're just going to give the uh, address, just in case people don't know where they're going. And finally, we're going to just put at the bottom of this stub to be retained. That's just an instruction to the customer so that they know what to do with this portion of the ticket. So it's all looking a bit basic at the moment, but we can improve on that, certainly. And I'm just going to highlight that first line there. And we're going to choose a slightly nicer font for our brass tax bar. Let's go for Rockwell. Rockwell's always a nice font and we need it much larger than that. So let's go for 24 is not bad. Right. And then Shatner's Bassoon are the main performer. So let's make them bigger as well. Let's go for Ravy. And once again, a larger font. Be brave with your font choices. The, these are this is the whole ticket you can see here, um, and our little special guests should probably be a little larger as well. And make that a little bit smaller. Right, and we've got a little bit of stuff lost off the bottom there. OK, and we've also got a bit of a gap underneath the Shatner's bassoon there. I want to just close that gap up. I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to say change text and I want a paragraph uh, change here. So I'm going to use the paragraph section to change the space between lines. I'm going to just change that to one. And that just pulls that text up a little bit. So that just brings that uh, design back a bit closer together. And I think we'll do the same thing here with the brass text bar. Change text, paragraph, and we'll just make that one. OK. Now, it's a pretty basic design so far. We can also copy this information um, to the stubs if we wish. Obviously, we're going to need to do a little bit of work on point sizes here. 
just going to shrink that text down shrink that text down and then the rest of the text Okay, that's looking a bit better. Let's just move that down a little bit. Just highlighting that first line there because if I just change the point size of that empty line, it lets me line things up a little more nicely. And we can just uh, drop these other bits down. And then on our second stub, we're going to say to be given up. Again, that's another little instruction to the customer just to let them know that this section is going to be given up on the door. And now we can copy all of that to our third stub and say box office. And in this case, we're not going to bother using our final stub back here. So we've got a box office stub, a given up on the door stub, and a to be retained section, which is the section the customer will keep. Uh, so let's just uh, make this look a little bit nice. So we can of course insert graphics into our tickets and I'm going to start by taking a picture from my hard drive. I'm going to use the PTP logo. So I'm just choosing that off the disk and I'm going to drag and drop that onto my ticket like so. So I can put that anywhere I like. I can put it down here if I wish and we can resize it as you can see and uh, Publish is quite nice. It will actually move text out of the way if I try and crash it into the text. But I'm going to keep that nicely out of the way. I'm going to leave a little space at the bottom right here for where I want the ticket numbers to go. Um, you need to, in your designs, remember that a ticket number is going to go on these tickets and think about where it's going to be. Don't put anything in that place. You don't, we don't need a block or anything telling us to put the, the ticket number there. Just tell us where you want the ticket numbers to go uh, when you speak to us and we will put them on there for you. Um, and uh, finally, if you really want to go all out with your ticket design, um, you can choose a full graphic. So I'm going to choose a picture again. And this time I'm going to choose PTP background and insert that file. You can see I've got a sort of a pre-made background here that... Um, I can use to as a background for the ticket. So you could, if you wish, design your entire background with all the details of your show and everything in it. You could put the actual text that we've been putting here in Publisher. You could put the text here in the graphic if you wish. Um, just remember that this graphic needs to fit the size of the ticket. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to expand my graphic like that. Now here's a bit of a gotcha. It's covered up the text and you can't see the layout of the ticket anymore. So what you need to do is send this graphic to the background which means it's going to be behind all of those other elements that you've already put on the ticket. And the way you do that here in, in Publisher 2011 is the send backwards or if you click that little down arrow send to back and that sends it all the way to the back. And uh, I'm just going to move that until that little blue uh, the difference between the blue and the green is between uh, our text at the top and the rest of our ticket. And I can just tidy this design up a little bit by using the crop tool and just drag that top down a little bit and drag the bottom up a little bit. Now, this might make you realize something else I'm doing here that you need to be aware of. Performance ticket printers can do full bleed printing, which means we can print all the way to the edge of the ticket. But um, the way full bleed is done is you need to have a little bit of extra uh, graphic going past the edge of the ticket so that we can trim that off. And the trimming is not a perfect science. It's not absolutely precise. It can go a couple of millimeters either way. And so you need to have the, uh, the, the print go off the edge of the ticket. So you can see the dotted lines inside the graphic here are where the actual uh, text areas of this ticket go. And then I actually left, let the graphic extend out slightly beyond the edges of that. And that's a good thing to do. That will mean that when we come to print your, your ticket, um, it will uh, do nice edge-to-edge -edge printing. Everything will trim nicely. And the other thing you need to remember, of course, is not to put anything too near the edge of the ticket because that might get trimmed, especially the right-hand edge. The right-hand edge is where the most uh, flexibility and trimming occurs. So if, if you've got a graphic like this, don't butt it right up against the edge of the ticket there.
you might end up losing the end of that E or something like that. So make sure everything is nicely away from the edges and make sure you've placed everything so that there is a bit of bleed past the end of the ticket. If you're not sure about sizes and if, or if you're using a product other than Microsoft Publisher, do check out that page on our website that's got all the ticket dimensions in it. Uh, if you'd prefer to work in Photoshop, we've got a Photoshop downloadable template file as well. Um, when you're done, just save this file. We can take uh, files in all sorts of different formats. As you can see here on the website, we can do PDFs, TIFFs, EPSs, uh, Adobe Illustrator files, PSDs, Word documents or publisher documents, and that's what we've been working in today. Save the file in the best quality you can. Make sure that when you're working with graphics, um, if you're doing a graphic for the full width of a ticket, you want to have somewhere in the region of 2,000 pixels from side to side uh, to make sure that you've got a good quality file for us to print. Um, and if you have any questions at all, please do get in touch with us on our phone number 01260 276164 and we'll be happy to try and help you to get your tickets set. Thanks very much for listening. Mm -hmm.